All right. Well, good afternoon. I've got a few updates for you regarding the ongoing investigation into Noel Rodriguez Alvarez. First, I want to talk about the physical ground searches. Since the start of this investigation, investigators have partnered with two incredible organizations. That includes Texas EquiSearch and Texar, otherwise known as Texas Search and Rescue. Thanks to the assistance of these volunteer-based organizations, we have successfully searched and cleared numerous tracts of land, totaling over 500 acres. These searches have included nearby wooded areas, creeks, ponds, drainage culverts, construction sites, and more. These teams consist of experts, expert trained volunteers with specialized equipment and resources, including drones, infrared cameras, LIDAR, human remain detection canines, horses, and even rescue boats. The searches conducted over the past weekend did lead to the recovery of some items within the search area. However, it is unclear at this time whether those items are specifically related to the disappearance of Noel. Nevertheless, these items have been collected by crime scene technicians and are being processed in a lab for confirmation. As to not cause any sort of undue speculation on the case, we're not sharing any specifics related to those items that were collected until lab tests confirm whether or not they're associated with this case. I wanna make sure that I highlight the importance of these searches, even when minimal or no physical evidence is located, each and every search is valuable and successfully moving this investigation forward. At this time, investigators are continuing to analyze data to determine if and where any additional searches may be conducted. Prior to the most recent search, I had expressed that investigators were focusing heavily on analyzing the tremendous amount of data that has been collected as a part of this investigation. This work continues as investigators continue to have data come in. There is simply some data that I cannot go into details on in order to protect the integrity of the investigation and in order to ultimately seek justice that Noel deserves. However, I do want to share that this data analysis has been incredibly important to this investigation. The data has supported Noel's disappearance, most likely occurred near the last week of October 2022, approximately six months ago. Additionally, financial records indicated that the plane tickets to India for Cindy, Arshdeep, and all six children were purchased on a credit card belonging to Arshdeep. Investigators also noticed an abnormally large cash deposit into Arshdeep's bank account. This deposit took place on March 22nd, just hours before fleeing the country. Through data analysis, investigators learned that Arshdeep had paid a visit to one of his places of employment prior to making that cash deposit. Arshdeep had access to the company's safe as a part of his normal job responsibilities. Investigators learned that Arshdeep first fraudulently altered the company's cash deposit records, likely in order to prevent detection, and then removed over $10,000 in cash from the company's safe, traveled to the nearest bank, and deposited $8,000 of that cash into his own personal account. We have now obtained an additional warrant for the arrest of Arshdeep for felony theft. We're going to be sharing a still image with you today of Arshdeep making that deposit. Today marks one month since the initial Amber Alert for this case was issued. Since then, this investigative team has spent thousands of man hours on this case, have followed more than 70 leads, issued more than two dozen search warrants, arrest warrants, and subpoenas, and conducted countless interviews. This investigation has taken us across state and country borders. Investigators have worked to compile a mountainous amount of information, data, and evidence in this case, and we continue to build that today. Each and every single day, we get closer and closer to the answers that we all seek. Although it has been a month and we have not yet found Noel, rest assured that we have not stopped the fight not even close. We will continue to fight for Noel until we have the answers that we need. And I wanna thank everybody for your overwhelming amount of support that this team has received during the course of this investigation. We know and understand how important this case is to the community and stand by our promise to do everything that we can in this case. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions.
Yeah, we, I don't want to cause any speculation in the case because we don't know if it's directly related to this case. And I think in sharing that information would cause some speculation that I, I don't want to cause with the case. So we're not going to share any details about what was collected um, other, until, until we get lab tests back that confirms whether or not it's related. Yes, they were they were located this past weekend during that that uh, the large search of the two areas nearby. Uh, different areas, yeah. Not right now. We're continuing to to evaluate the data, um, and investigators are working to determine if there are going to be any additional searches, and if so, when and where those will occur. But right now, we don't have any plans to conduct any ground searches. And keep in mind, although ground searches may not be happening, the data searches are still happening, and they're still continuing to search through that data, which is equally as important in this case. Yeah, so I can tell you that the investigators have compiled a, a multitude of search warrants for data. I, I don't want to go into the specifics on what kind of data, um, but it, pretty much, as I've said before, if you can think about it, we, we're probably looking at it in this case. Um, and, and obviously, with this statement, I've included things like financial data and obviously cellular data. So we're, we're looking at all avenues here. Unfortunately, there's not a set date. Um, it kind of just depends on the lab's processes and things. And we've obviously been processing a lot of evidence through there. So um, it just depends on how long it takes them to do. Typically, we use the uh, DPS lab, Texas DPS lab. And I mentioned before that you did the cooperation of the authorities. Yeah, so we're we're essentially hands off with anything to do with their, their capture and extradition. That's that's a. Uh, oh, completely up to the FBI. We've obviously turned this over to them and uh, are, are relying on them to be able to, to fulfill that for us. Um, we don't have the authority, the jurisdiction to be able to go over to India and capture them and bring them back. We would have to rely on our federal partners to be able to do that. Um, and we rely solely on them. Nothing, no updates yet, no. Yes. Yeah, financial financials are, are certainly being considered with all this, and we're looking very closely in all the financials. No, not initially. So the store ownership did not was not indicated to it because our steep had fraudulently altered the forms, so it didn't provide an off balance on their sheets. Uh, they weren't aware of it until we made them aware that there was a suspicious deposit. Um, and then after they went back and pulled the, the documents, they realized that there was an indicator that he had fraudulently altered the cash deposit forms uh, to indicate a $10,000 withdrawal, which ultimately was made to him in, in his bank account. Yeah, so the plane, the plane tickets were actually purchased on a credit card that belonged to, to RSD. Um, so the, per, the tickets, remember, were purchased roughly 24 hours, uh, less than 24 hours before they left the country. And those were purchased on a credit card. Um, this money was stolen uh, mere hours before they even left the country. So likely to give them some cash to be able to flee the country with so they could afford things, I guess, when they got there is, is, is my speculation on it. What kind of business was this? Uh, he worked uh, for convenience stores, worked for different convenience stores. Um, was His primary responsibility was to go and deliver items and pick up different items and deliver those to the different convenience stores. Uh, no, I mean, I, obviously, it's because they, they didn't have the finances to support their operations and what they were looking to do here and fleeing the country. I mean, the finances just weren't there. So clearly, he, he chose to, to steal it from his employer. Yeah, he works for a company that has multiple stores in, in, in the Metroplex. Yeah, we've got the still shots. We've got the still shots from the bank, and we're going to share those with you today as, as soon as we're done. I, I'm, I, we, can't, we're not, we can't release which bank it is just yet. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I know landfills has come up a lot. And uh, previous to this, I, I have never had any experience myself with looking at landfills. And I can tell you that we have engaged with experts who have had experience in conducting those landfill searches. And to much of my amazement, and, and, and now I completely understand, it is a very, very complex and convoluted process to go and just do a landfill dig. In order for us to be able to successfully coordinate and, and perform a landfill dig, we have to have more information. We really need to specifically know if and when the, a, a body would have been disposed of. So we have a date and timestamp and we know where that trash would have been taken to to the site. Uh, landfills aren't just, you know, they don't just collect trash and pile it up, you know, without any sort of design. There's architects and engineers involved in all of that. And for us to be able to successfully do a dig to find any evidence, we would have to know more information, specific information in order to move forward with that. And even with moving forward, if we did choose to move forward with that, there would be a, a, a pretty good chance that it would be hard to recover any of any evidence just because of the way that the trash is handled and processed. So uh, we have not conducted any landfill digs. And as of right now, we don't have any plans to unless we get specific data that would uh, steer us in that direction. Yeah, so um, I'll tell you what, let me just do this. Let me, I've got a timeline here and let me just kind of recap the entire timeline a little bit for you. So in, in mid-October, we know that the newborn twins were discharged from the hospital and we have had eyewitness testimony that states uh, Noel was at the residence for about a week after those twins came home. November 1st is when Cindy and all six kids went and took their passport photos. On November 2nd, there were applications applied for passports for Cindy and all six kids. Noel was not included in any of those. Uh, November the 6th, we've got data that supports that Cindy began researching costs and things for trips to India. And then you fast forward to March 20th when we received the, the initial welfare check. So our timeline has been narrowed down to between about a week after the twins came home and then November 1st when it appears that Cindy begins to plan an escape from the country. Can we cap which um, charges of any are, are these two people now looking at? Sure, so, so right now we have one warrant issued for Cindy for false, giving false information related to a missing child case. Uh, that's a Class C misdemeanor. That was one of the first warrants we issued. Um, she also has an additional warrant for violation of probation that was issued shortly after the Amber Alert was issued. Uh, we have felony two warrants for abandoning or endangering a child, which are issued for both Cindy and Arshdeep. And now we've got a felony theft charge issued for Arshdeep in addition to. And as we continue to work through this, of course, if we identify any other charges, we're going to continue to get warrants for those charges as well. If, if I knew it offhand, I would tell you, but I, I don't, and I'll see if I can get that for you. I, I just don't know the name of the company right off the top of my head, but I'll see if we can get that for you. And also, you're telling us there's no update from that. Is that, um, uh, well, what does that do to your case, or even to morale, to not be able to know what's going on? At the sure. So, it, it, I mean, you know, it does absolutely nothing to our morale. I mean, our morale is not affected by, by what's happening on the federal front. Our entire focus has been on investigating this case, finding leads on where Noel is, and then ultimately proving what happened to him. That's that's our team's focus, and that's 100% where we're focused. Uh, once once we've uh, accomplished certain tasks, we'll issue warrants. We turn it over to the federal partners that we're working with to be able to fulfill it from there. Our team isn't focused on what happens from there. I mean, our, our team is focused right now 100% on finding Noel or finding the answers to what happened to him. And that's, that's been 100% our focus, and it has not affected our morale, and I don't think it will. We'll, we'll continue to, to push this investigation forward all, all together. What about the fathers of the children that are going to have the baby? Have they been still opportunities? What are their rights? Yeah, so um, not knowing all of the details regarding parental rights there, I don't think the fathers, for one reason or another, had parental rights. I believe that all the children were in some manner signed over to where Cindy was the sole custodian parent of, of all those six children. Um, however, I can tell you, particularly the father of Noel um, has expressed concern for the case. He, we've talked to him multiple times throughout this investigation. Uh, we have talked to a couple of the other fathers as well. 
um, who weren't really aware of all the details, but these, these fathers were uh, not really involved much with the lives um, since the separation from Cindy. Um, and it appears that through one manner or another that, that custody was, was given to Cindy altogether. So they just, they had no involvement really. Well, likely. I mean, first, you've got to consider that there's a delay in getting passports. I mean, we can't just apply for a passport and get it right away. Um, so I would imagine that that probably played a key factor into them, into their ability to leave the country. Um, and she may have just gotten comfortable. All this is speculation. She may have just gotten comfortable with uh, with nobody questioning the whereabouts until police started coming and knocking on the door. And then suddenly she wants to abscond the country. Um, so it, it's hard to say exactly what they did during that period of time. Obviously, it's something what we're looking at as we're doing the data analysis. Um, and trying to identify their course of action during that time. Um, but she clearly started planning this starting November 1st. And somewhere in there, she decided to stay for a patio. Exactly, yeah. Sometime in there, she starts to, to pay for the patio. Um, if you'd like, I've got a fact sheet here I can go over just to kind of highlight some of the publicly known fact sheets that are leading us to the conclusions we're getting at um, and just kind of review some of these because I know it's been, it's been a month. We've talked about a lot of different facts in the case, so it might be a good time to, to highlight these. Um, we've talked about first how Noel was never enrolled in school, although he tested and qualified for early entry and, and even therapy. Uh, according to family members, Noel was reportedly abused and neglected regularly. Food and water were often withheld because Cindy didn't like changing his diapers. Uh, we know that Cindy reportedly struck Noel in the face with keys for drinking water. We know that Cindy reportedly referred to Noel as evil, possessed, or having a demon in him. Noel began missing doctor's appointments after July of 2022. Cindy asked to even borrow a child from an acquaintance of hers to attend a doctor's appointment so that she could keep benefits. At Noel's last sighting, he was described as appearing unhealthy and malnourished. Cindy told family members different stories about the whereabouts of Noel, including that she sold him to a lady in a Fiesta Mart parking lot. The biological father nor the aunt in Mexico have never even met Noel. No data has, is available to support any trips remotely close to the border, and no data is available to support that Noel was sold, especially at a Fiesta Mart. Cindy told family members to lie to police about seeing Noel recently. Family lived in squalor, however, chose to spend nearly their entire tax return on a newly constructed patio for a home that they don't even own. According to the contractor, she was in a hurry, was indecisive, and even requested the patio be thicker in a certain area. Arshdeep disposed of a single indoor-outdoor carpet in a dumpster the night before leaving the country, however, leaves the remainder of the squalor and trash behind in the home, shed, and backyard. Multiple human remains detection canines alert to both the rug as well as under the concrete patio. Arshdeep steals $10,000 from his employer just hours before leaving the country. Electronic visas were obtained on March 21st, one day before the, or one day after the welfare check. And obviously, the family quickly absconds the country with one-way flight tickets all the way to India, almost immediately after CPS and, and police began to question the whereabouts of Noel. So all of these things are, are what has led us to the conclusion of this being a death investigation and why we are taking the path that we are taking and, and really what's pushing us forward. And when you when you take a step back, and I think when you look at the totality of the circumstances, you, you really get an understanding of, of what kind of case we're dealing with here. And these, these are just the facts that we've released. This doesn't even include the facts that we haven't been able to talk about. Yeah, we're we're still we're still going to evaluate all the data. We want we want to be able to to have all the firm answers without any guesses, and that's what our investigative team is working at right now. We have the ability to go after them right now with the felony two warrants that were issued. I mean, that was the purpose of issuing those felony two warrants was to try to get them into custody and get them extradited back here so that we can question them regarding the disappearance of Noel. Um, but we're going to keep pushing this forward regardless. We still have some more data to evaluate. We've still got some more opportunities ahead of us. Uh, we're not at the end game of this investigation by any means. Um, and, and like I mentioned earlier, just the searches that we've completed are telling us where he's not, pointing us in the right direction, the right direction of where he may be. So we're going to keep pushing that forward. We knew, that is one task that, that would be very helpful here is obviously finding him. Uh, regardless, I mean, regardless of charges, we want to we want to find him and 
and, and put him to rest where, where he deserves to be. Yeah, Clear Clearcom was kind enough to work with us and sponsor the, the advertisement of this just to try to bring more attention to the case. Attention and, and your efforts here in the media have been instrumental in this case. Uh, the tips have been extremely instrumental in this case, getting the information that we've needed. This whole case started from a tip. Um, so it, it's it's in, it's paramount that this uh, that the tips come in and, and anybody with information call us. So certainly, yes, that's a part of that effort to get to get public awareness. Um, out there and make sure that we're getting all the tips that, that we may be able to get on the case. Yeah, so, I mean, we did we did locate some items on the searches this past weekend. However, it's unclear if those items are actually related to this case or not. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that these these locations that were searched are off of some busy roadways, so it's it's very possible that they may not even be associated with our case. So before we identify what those items are, we're going to conduct lab tests to confirm whether or not they're associated with the case. Uh, we're, go ahead. You know, I, and I understand that that the the disturbed feeling that people may have may have gotten when they saw the Santa Muerte, there's. It, it really hasn't played much of a factor into the actual case or building any sort of probable cause or anything related to an offense. Um, and, and it just hasn't been an avenue that we've really looked to pursue because we're not sure that it would even be fruitful there. Um, obviously, she has, the, she has the freedom to worship whoever she wishes to worship. She has the freedom of religion, and we're not going to impede on that. And we're not sure that who she worshipped had any direct link to what happened to Noel. Um, and we're certainly not sure that it would it would well, and I know that it wouldn't play in at this point to to any probable cause that we would be seeking for any, any kind of charge. So it just hasn't been something that's been really on the forefront of the investigation. Um, obviously, I, I know that people were uncomfortable when they first saw it and, and immediately had some thoughts, but it's it's just not something that's at the forefront of the investigation at this point. We've got other data and things that we are focusing on that do provide the the. We've put in that we've put in the request. Haven't got it yet, so we put in that request, and I think I think many of you have as well. So, just haven't got that yet. We don't have any. We don't have any more further ground searches planned as of yet. So we're going to continue to analyze the data. Uh, we have cleared over 500 acres of nearby tracts of land. Um, so we're feeling more and more confident about the areas that we visited. Any, and I've talked about this before, any ground searches that we do, we want to make sure that they are um, with a purpose and not just random because we want to make sure that we don't miss anything in this case. And we want to make sure that we have data to support that. Um, so before we, we plan any further ground searches, we're going to make sure that we go back and review the data and have data to support any of those. How has this 